welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at Kick Ninja. This is another plugin by the Him. Well, he asked me to check it out a while ago. Uh, I've been using it extensively. I just haven't really had time to do a video, but I think now is the time. So let's review this and show you some of the cool things it can do. So these are some of the uh, kick drums that I've already made on it. And I've got set for different things. So I've got EDM and trance. Let's drag in one of the dubstep ones and I'll show you why this program is so cool. So if I drag one in, we get an exact replica of it. It resynthesizes the low end. And it takes the sample, puts it in a sampler and high passes. So you're going to get the click and a resynthesized sub. So let's hear that resynthesized sub. And if you put it together with the original sample. And if you hear the original sample. Versus. They're identical. So. Let's take the oscillator off for a second, which is the resynthesized sub. And as you can see, it's put the sample in here, but it's taken the sub away from it. And it's already done that. So now if we look at the kick and we go into the pitch, we can see the pitch of this kick. So what we could do is we could Delete these nodes. We know roughly it goes up to somewhere like here. And delete all of these. And we should have a similar sound. Let's turn the oscillator back on. Now it's not identical. But here's where the fun begins. So we made a nice variation of that kick now. So what we can do is go like this. Export. Let's kick one. <clears throat> let's get a bit more deep. And let's try and draw this ourselves. So let's initialize the oscillator. And I think it went down to about there and then came up and then went down there and then probably faded off like that. I think we're left with something like that. So you see how we took a kick. We looked at the way that the pitch envelope was set. We deleted all the nodes. We started off with a sine wave. And we drew the shape that we wanted. Kind of like that. So what I've noticed is when you're drawing your own, this body bit is where it's like the sustain. That's so where like you're going to hear the pitch envelope massively at the beginning to make the click. And then you're going to hear it a lot in the body as well. Beyond that is just where you want it to end. So what note is going to fall to? So if we just have it at the same note <clears throat> where the body ends, that's generally okay. And then our amp envelope, we just want a little dip and that's it. So we've got a nice kick drum already that we've synthesized ourselves. And 
then we could just export that. You notice very quickly we can build up a library doing this. So instead of me trying to draw it in this time, what I'll do is I'll just drag one in. And I'm going to do little edits to it. So I'll do my thing first and delete most of the nodes. like that. I like that. So the more nodes you draw in, the more control you'll have over things. Just by curving one of those nodes there makes a big difference. Or here. So you see, I think these ones, yeah, that one I synthesized, so let's get rid of that one. You see how we've created uh, one, two, three, four, five versions of the same kit, <clears throat> but it's more akin to a little library we've created of kits that all fall to the right note, and they've all got that same kind of like crack at the beginning. So what we end up with is a nice little library. And we can muck around with the amp as well. And also now we know that this works or the low end works, we could try changing the attack to one of the attacks on here. So like the little transient. And if we do that, we'll have to put the amp on it again. So there's another little one. And we could make that last a little bit longer, give it a bit of a hold. And you see how quickly you can build a library. So now we've got Really useful. If we start from scratch, just gonna have a sine wave and nothing loaded into any of the other ones, which is how I like to work. So we're going to the pitch and we'll put that roughly on F6 will do. And then we wanna put a point here at the end of the attack point here where the body is and kind of like that and let's see what this sounds like so you've already got a basic kick there now the main things you're going to hear are the attack and the body so Further up you got this line, the more punchier it's going to be. This node As I said, it's like the sustain. And then this is kind of like the release, even though it says decay. I suppose it is decay. quite nice but I think the uh, the note isn't low enough
That's quite nice. And then you've got effects. And another thing that's good about this, if I take the effect off, you've got this harmonic section. So that would be the first harmonic. Uh, I forget the word. And then you would have the second harmonic, the third harmonic, and the fourth harmonic. So as we start going up, this gets more tonal. So say, for example, I put you need the blend up. So that's what I mean by more tonal. Three, slightly less tonal. And this is the second harmonic. And this will be the fundamental. So I see it as the fundamental frequency that you're starting from. I see this as adding a little bit of knock. I see this as adding... A bit more than a knock, really. And then when it gets to the fourth harmonic... Talking about turning it into a note. Um, all right, so really good. I mean, you can basically get any kick that you want. Let's say, for example... It's a hip-hop kick that I made. And you can see the amp envelope. And you can see the pitch envelope. Now, I could roughly draw this in. If I deleted all of these. I don't know, off memory somewhere from there to there. Instantly, we've created our own one. That's the original. That's ours. And really, it's very difficult to argue which one's right. It's quite nice. Okay, so I'm going to end it here. Um, this is really good. Uh, it's definitely replaced Nicky Romero's kick for me, mainly because every time you do something, it resynthesizes it. So if I go to the oscillator here and I go to pit, you can see every time I draw a new node, something happens to the waveform. And it's because it's resynthesizing everything. So if I add um, the third harmonic, the fourth harmonic, you're going to see it. Which is brilliant. You can zoom in to sample level. And this is really good for understanding, you know, if you've got a kick that you're like, wow, that kick's amazing. Not that one. But, you know, you could find one that you really like. So that's really nice. And you could say to yourself, right. If I look at the pitch, I know it starts at. F6, I might be wrong there, but whatever the first node is. And then I know it falls. I know it falls to F1. And it also tells you the time of it as well, which is interesting. Look, if I drag another one in, the time moves. So this is telling you the length, and it's also telling you the the note that it falls to and the note that it starts and everything in between um, but I do think it's a really good idea sometimes to delete these nodes there is a simplify method where you can do this you right click it but sometimes it doesn't get rid of as many nodes it might even do a better job than I'm doing but I just prefer to delete the nodes so that it's simple um, generally you should have a node here, a node here, a node here and then somewhere where it's going to go down and on the amp uh, like Jay said in his videos, you need a dip. You see that the kick dips in volume and then comes back up. Okay, that's it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I highly recommend this plugin. There'll be a link in the description. Thanks for your time, and I'll see you soon.